Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. And in today's PAC program, I'm going to be looking at the question, do we have the green light to go back and retest the 73,000 one more time? I'm also going to be having a look at exactly what's happening with the wider markets, what's in the news, as well as look at the 60-day cycle for Bitcoin and why that's confirming bright skies ahead for July for the Bitcoin price. We'll also have a look at a few of the Bexit indicators to see exactly where we are in the market. So if that sounds interesting, then without further ado, get yourself a cup of tea, sit yourself down, eyes on the screen, and let's get cracking. But before I begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember everything in my videos is just for educational purposes. So please always do your wider research before you make any investment decisions or any swing trade decisions. Okay, before we get into the meat of the video, just want to make a quick announcement that until further notice, I'll only be able to do a video on the Monday and not on the Thursdays, at least for the next few weeks anyway, and then I'll see if I'm able to find some time on the Thursdays again. But until further notice, it'll just be on the Mondays for the time being. Okay, let's have a look at the signal that's giving us a green light to run up back to the 73,000. It's not going to be easy. There's a lot of challenges ahead, but it's a good first signal that we've had for a while that tells us that we're probably going to have a very good July coming ahead. So what am I talking about? I'm really talking about this particular candle here, this hammer candle. And as you saw back here, we had a similar candle which helped us to run all the way back up and retest those 73 highs. So what this hammer candle is telling us on the weekly time frame, so it's a good time frame for accuracy purposes, is that it's like a trampoline, it's bounced from here, the bears have lost control at this point and the bulls have taken charge and pushed the price right up here. So there's a rejection of lower prices from this point onwards. And what this does is, it gives us a foundation for the price to bounce all the way up here with the momentum that this creates. But as you can see with the following candle here, it's not going to be plain sailing, it may come back halfway back before it actually starts moving to the upside. So there are challenges there, but the signal is giving us a green light at least to run up to at least around the 65, possibly even 67,000 up here. So 65 would be the first challenge. And as we'll see with the 60 day cycle, we do have a very good opportunity for this to run up at least to the 65,000. And another thing to notice is that just like with this wick here, what we've really got a certain pattern developing whereby whenever the price goes below the 60,000, there's no appetite to go much lower than that time and time again. It's not really allowing it to go. So this looks like a very strong flaw for the price. And maybe this time around, when we do go and eventually retest the 73, this may be the time where it actually breaks because we've had one go here, another one there, another one, and four. This could be the fifth time to go up there. And unlike the floor at 60,000, the wicks here do not resemble the same types of wicks that are at the bottom of that floor at 60,000. So it's always good to notice certain patterns developing within a consolidation range that we've now got. And it seems like this could continue one more time yet. So we've got to always be aware of that, that we could come and retest that one more time. But each time we come to the top to retest it, it does give it a little bit more of a probability to break through eventually. So you can see the weekly chart is looking really bullish with this close of the candle last night. And if we run down to the daily chart time frame, what we have is an inverse head and shoulders, which is now forming a proper right shoulder here. So if we look on the left hand side, what we've got is a left shoulder, or you can even call it a double shoulder here. Then we've got the head, and then we've now got a single shoulder there, but this one is now going to come and form the right shoulder. So you've got a symmetrical inverse head and shoulders pattern with two shoulders on the left-hand side. So an extended shoulder pattern and another extended shoulder pattern here. And a measured move on this pattern would be from the base of the head to the neckline at around about the 73,000. That gives us around about a 28, 29% move to the upside when we break up. And that would take it to $93,000. So once we break out of here, the first target from this pattern of the inverse head and shoulders would be around about $93,000. If we have a closer look at this, 
with the exponential moving averages, another great signal is now developing here, which gives us a lot of positivity just going forward in the short term at least. And that is that you can see the blue line here, which is the 8 EMA on the daily chart. And when we lost it here, it's really been providing a lot of resistance all along until yesterday when we closed above it one more time. So what that's telling us is that the pressure of the bears is now beginning to weaken. And this is really the first sign that the bulls are taking charge. We've managed to recapture the 8 EMA. We've got rejection at the 21 so far. And being a daily candle, we're just leaving this wick at the moment of that rejection at the 21. But as long as we don't close with this gravestone doji candle here, we should be good to go to push higher towards the white line, which is the 34 exponential moving average. And that's at 64 and a half. But by the time the price comes up to it, that will be your first challenge at 65,000. And that may well be where the first correction is all the way back down to around about the 61,000 to create this double bottom pattern before we actually eventually go and retest the 70 to 73,000 up here. So while the weekly hammer candle is providing us a very good signal, it's not a clear pathway all the way up to 73 straight away. There will be challenges around the 65 and the 67,000. But once we get above that, that's when we'll get a proper pathway to that 73,000. But until then, the probability is we're going to get rejected to create a second double bottom here. So the overall look at the moment for the Bitcoin price is, so we've had a run up here from the beginning of the year and we're just consolidating between 73 and 60,000 and we're on our way to retest the 73 here again and we have an opportunity either to break up this time or have one more 60 day cycle down here to retest this and shake out all the other rest of the weak hands before we make the big move towards the end of this year. So what's going to be required really here is going to be a lot of patience because when we look back here, this is exactly what happened. We had a long consolidation of a few months at this point before we had this big move to the upside. And it looks like it's going to have a similar type of consolidation range repeated over here. And if we now have a look at exactly what's happening in the wider field with Bitcoin in terms of the news and in terms of the wider markets, it will give us a very important and accurate perspective of what's happening now and what may well happen over the coming weeks and months. What we've really got now is that Bitcoin seems to be in a very good position for a rebound for July. Yeah, and even though we've got the Mount Gox and the refunds from there, that might actually put a little bit of bearish pressure. But generally speaking, the bigger, wider perspective would be that we may well have a very good July coming up, looking at the charts in terms of what the charts are telling us. And if we move down here, we'll see that with this particular chart, something very interesting developing. If you look at these two columns here for June and July, if you go back here, whenever we've had a red month in June, it's usually followed by a green month in July. Similarly here, red month followed by a green month, 20% up here, 9% up there. And we had three Junes in a row that were red. And each of them were followed by a 24%, 18% and a 16% increase in July. And we've just finished June here at minus 6.96%. So just based on the historical perspective here, there is a good probability that we're going to have a very good July coming up one more time. And if we move down a little bit, we'll see what's happening with the Mount Gox and the repayments that we're expecting in July from Mount Gox. So this is the unknown that's coming up. And what we've really got is eight and a half billion dollars in Bitcoin being paid back to the creditors starting in the first week of July. So let's see how that pans out. But that seems to be the only blot on the landscape at the moment. But many analysts are saying that the repayments may not be as dire as many investors are expecting. And they're expecting about $4 billion out of the eight and a half to hit the spot Bitcoin market. So let's see what happens, but certainly need to be aware of what's going on. So while we can look forward to a good July, there is a little bit of a there is a little bit of a dark spot with the Mount Gox repayments coming up here. And if we move on to the liquidation heat map, it's telling us a very similar story that having now recaptured 63,000, we do have the leverage players here with their stops at around about the 61,000 200 level. So the question is, are we going to move up first to take out this 64,000? 
before coming back down to 61? Or do we come back here first before we go back up and retest the 65 one more time? So you can see this is range bound between 61 and 64,000. And one of the reasons why the price for Bitcoin has been firming up over the last few days, we can see quite clearly that the ETF Bitcoin flows, June 28th, this is the one there, we started to now get some sort of a net inflow rather than outflow. And this is reflected now in the number of Bitcoins being held. So on the one day list here, you can see that BlackRock is more than matching the amount of Bitcoins now going out. So on the seven day chart, this is obviously a lot more gone out. But now as we've just seen with the in net inflows, while there's a lot of red numbers here, the numbers itself do not constitute any more than what's been coming into the BlackRock ETF. And if we move on to the wider markets, firstly looking at the dollar, what we can see quite clearly, as I drew this symmetrical triangle, last week we were coming up to the resistance point and there was a high probability we're going to get rejected and this is exactly what's happened here. Sooner or later this is going to break and hopefully it'll break to the downside here which will allow the wider markets to actually let the hair down and start moving to the upside. And if we have a quick look at the weekly chart, it's giving us a clue that more than likely it's going to come back down to the bottom of this support line at least anyway, because what we saw, what, because what we're seeing here with the candlestick patterns is an evening star, i.e. at the top of a trend, you've got a green solid candle here, an indecision candle followed by a red candle on the other side and that's virtually the same as what's happened over here and this is what happened when it brought the price down back to the support line at this point so this is a very similar development taking place at this point so it looks like in the short term anyway dollar seems to be coming down which allows the wider markets to breathe a bit more easier and if we move on to the SPX on the daily chart the 60 day cycle so while the SPX was going up over the last few weeks and the Bitcoin price was going down so there was a divergence going on between the SPX and the Bitcoin price the signal on the SPX seems to be telling me that that's now going to reverse because what we've got is an outside bearish engulfing candle here this red candle and we're coming up to the 60 day cycle around the middle of July so so what I'm expecting now is that as we come into the end of that cycle, we may well have a rundown either to the top here at about 5300. And if it's going to be a deeper correction, it may come back down all the way to retest this level before we start the new cycle. So the SPX is looking on the bearish side at the moment here. And if we move on to gold, what we've really got is very similar to Bitcoin, i.e. we've had a big run up in 2024 all the way from here. And we have now got this bull flag in a range bound consolidation going on. And it seems to be finding very good strong support at this level here around about the 2300. So we're finding support here. I would have expected a 61.8 correction here, but that doesn't seem to be materializing. But sooner or later, just like Bitcoin, it's preparing the groundwork for a breakup somewhere up here over the next few weeks and months. And if we move on to the silver, we can see it with this gravestone doji candle, as mentioned at the time, that this is going to create a pressure for the downside. And what we've really got is some sort of a consolidation taking place at these levels here at around about the $29 mark. And just like gold, we're getting a bull flag consolidation taking place and once this breaks out to the upside, then we can have another leg of the bull market continuing over the coming weeks and months. And if we move on to the 60 day cycle for Bitcoin, giving us a very good signal, just like the weekly close, what we've really now got is we've come to the end of the 60 day cycle. And with that weekly close is telling us that with a good degree of probability that this daily candle, which I pointed out last week, this may well be the day 54 cycle low that we've now got. And we're now starting to move a little bit higher. But this close won't be confirmed until we get above this actual candle here, which is at the top of that is 63,300. So once we clear that, that'll confirm the end of this cycle here and the beginning of the new cycle. And if we move left, it's now giving us a full cycle to actually grow into. So if we can confirm this 60 day cycle low and the start of the new cycle, that allows us to move the red line to this point here like that. And it gives the room and oxygen for the Bitcoin price to move towards the 73,000 into the mid cycle before we have a mid cycle low and the continuation up here into the 60 day cycle low here. So hopefully if we can break above this neckline at 73, 
and then use that as a support for the end of the 60 day cycle here. Otherwise, if we do get a rejection at this point and come back down for another consolidation move, then this could be the start of the following cycle going into September and October. But like I said, with the weekly candle, as well as the liquidation heat map, it may well be that we go up to about the 65,000 here, get rejected, come back and take out the leverage players at around 61,000 before moving higher into the midpoint of this current new cycle. And that creates the double bottom, a bit like here, and then go and retest that 73. So this is the kind of pattern I'm really looking for over here. But as I said, there is a bit of turbulence that may well be here around about the 65 or 67,000. Okay, before we have a look at the Bexit indicators of exactly where we are in this cycle, we get a lot of questions regarding the ratio trades that we do in the private Bitcoin miners member section that we run here at Wisdom Bytes. And I know many of you are following our portfolios that we've got running with the Bitcoin miners. So I'll show you those exactly where they are. So for the benefit of the new subscribers here, we started with a capital for around 100,000 back in January 2023 and ended the year at the end of 2023 with $434,000 by investing in the Bitcoin miners only. And then we're experimenting with that amount of money for 2024 by having a passive portfolio with the same amount of money as well as having a trading portfolio with the same amount of money. The difference being with the passive portfolio, we picked these miners to run for the rest of the bull market and see exactly where we get to compared to a trading portfolio where we're going to be doing ratio trades, which we've been doing now for the last six months. But since we started the private section in 2023, we did quite a lot of swing trades all the way through 2023. And before I show you the outcomes of those swing trades, we can see quite clearly with the passive portfolio, we are now up, we are up to 453,000 pounds from the original 100,000 that we started at the beginning of 2023. But the trading portfolio where we do a lot of the ratio trades, if we have a look at that, you can see quite clearly that has grown to 549,000. And that is nearly $100,000 more than the passive portfolio. So what this is really telling us is that while this passive portfolio is going to do incredibly well, because we have the same target for both portfolios to see which one will actually hit the target first. And and the target for the end of the bull market is $5 million, starting off with 100,000 at the beginning of 2023. So we're up to about half a million at both of them here, with the trading portfolio outperforming the passive portfolio. And we're expecting a leverage play for the Bitcoin miners over the Bitcoin price between now and the end of the bull market. And many people have asked us about the swing trades and how successful they were. I haven't shown you this for quite a while, so I'll go back and just give you a refresher that when we started these swing trades back in March 2023. So all through 2023, we actually carried out these swing trades. And these were the results of those swing trades. So this was the round one, the first round of the swing trades. These were the second round of the swing trades. We got stopped out on the third round where we had the failed cycle with Bitcoin. Then round four and five and six here, we had these results on round four. These are round five. And this had two parts to it, part one and part two. On the second part, we actually had a loss of minus 18%. And the last round was back in February this year with these results here. So these were the swing trades all through 2023, which obviously, as you can which obviously, as you can see, were incredibly successful with very good percentage increases. But since then, we've created a different aspect of trading with the safety in mind, i.e. at no point do we actually hold cash like we do with the swing trades. But instead, we're moving at strategic places between the various miners. And before I show you exactly what these ratio trades are in terms of the charts, to give you some insight into these trades, we've been doing these since the 24th of January, and we've carried out just over 20 trades so far. And we are currently in the middle of a couple of them. But if you have a look at the results so far of what we've had, if I scroll down here, you'll see the various percentage increases we've had so far in the last six months. So you can see these are the results results we've had so far in terms of the percentage increases. This one wasn't actually a ratio trade. We just transferred from one to the other because CleanSpark was really making a big move at the time. And I was very much heavy into the Cypher percentage allocation at that time. But because there was a big increase in the CleanSpark price from a couple of months before, 
that really meant a 33% loss there. But even if you take that into account, these are incredibly successful trades, which a lot of the members there are now taking part in. So what are these ratio trades? So what we know with the Bitcoin miners and any other assets is that two different assets will move up and down at different rates. So even in a rally, one asset will move faster than the other one and vice versa. And what this ratio chart here between Marathon and CleanSpark, what it's really capturing is that one of the Bitcoin miners is moving faster than the other. So one may be coming down and the other one may be going up. And this chart really tells us exactly that picture. So what we can do is at this point, we can see that Marathon is increasing relative to CleanSpark. And then we've got this point here where it reverses and CleanSpark is doing relatively better than Marathon. So once you get some sort of a pattern developing, you can create a channel where there's a higher probability to trade. So what we do is we try and swap over at this point and then swap back at this point. And now we're coming at the top of this line here one more time, the trend line with a higher probability. And it is a game of probabilities. Please remember, these are not guarantees or certainties. We're not in that type of domain. We're in the domain of possibilities and probabilities. So the chances are, the probability is that this is now going to reverse back down at least to the 61.8 level here, as has happened in the past, as has happened in the past down here. So these are the types of ratio trades that we do when we actually play off one miner against the other. So at this point, we sell one and buy the other. And at this point, we sell one and buy the other on the reverse side. So at no point are you risking the market running away from you because you're always going to be on one miner or the other. And this is what creates the ratio trades between the various different miners. And just by having that understanding of the patterns and understanding candlesticks allows us to have very successful trades under the heading of the ratio trades, which feeds into the trading portfolio that we've got with the Bitcoin miners. And some people have actually left the Bitcoin miners completely because they've got this perception that the Bitcoin miners are not actually performing, but the facts are quite different. And I'm going to show you exactly what's happened because this may well be your last chance to get onto the Bitcoin miners. So let me just show you the chart when you zoom out and look at the proper perspective of how the Bitcoin miners have performed against Bitcoin, you'll have a more of an accurate picture than those people who've taken the emotional decision to leave the Bitcoin miners. So what we know with Bitcoin is that Bitcoin, since the bottom of the bear market at 15,400 and the high of 73,800, that is a 375% increase in the Bitcoin price. So from the bottom of the bear market to its recent high, Bitcoin went up by 375%. If you compare that with the major miners over here, we have a bit of a wild card in here, which you really need to ignore, the Canaan one. That was a special play, and that's unfortunately gone down by 60%. But if you stick to the major miners over here, you can see that the Bitcoin 375% has been surpassed by Marathon, which has gone up in the same period by 1,000%, CleanSpark by 1,320%, Riot by 535%, etc. You can see these big numbers with the major miners. And I've also put in here the leverage of the Bitcoin miners against the Bitcoin price. So you can see Marathon over the same period from the bottom of the bear market to its recent high has increased against Bitcoin by 2.6x, CleanSpark by 3.5x, Riot by 1.4, Cypher by 3.8, etc. And you can see quite clearly that the Bitcoin miners have actually outperformed Bitcoin on a good level of leverage play. And we expect this to continue in the next leg of the bull market. So if Bitcoin doubles up and these results were to follow, which we have no reason to expect not to, you can expect these to go up by more than 3x on average against the Bitcoin price. And of course, with the ratio trades, that will bump up the leverage even more. And I'm going to show you an example with the Riot platforms in the last cycle. So we can see that Riot platforms followed a similar path to Bitcoin, topped out very similar to Bitcoin at the end of 2017, a bottomed out at the end of 2018. And in the COVID situation, from there to the actual halving at this point, if you take the measure from the bottom of the COVID situation to the halving here, this went up by about 542%. Whereas Bitcoin, from the bottom of the COVID situation here to the halving, 
went up by 161%. So you can see it's more than doubled with the Riot platforms, i.e. the Bitcoin miners. But this is where the Bitcoin miners are expected to do much better than Bitcoin. So if you take it from here at the halving, at 69,000, Bitcoin went up by 593%, call it 600%. Whereas Riot platform from the same position here to when it topped out at $79, went up by 2,868%. So that was a higher leverage play after the halving of 4.6. So before the halving was twice as much, but after the halving, it went up by a leverage play of four and a half times against the Bitcoin price. And we only have one data point, but if that was to follow for the rest of the Bitcoin miners, we should be able to expect an even better outperformance in the next many, many months until the end of the bull market. So this is what we're expecting. And this is the reason why, as I mentioned many times before, I don't have Bitcoin, but I am actually fully focused 100% on the Bitcoin miners. So our job at the Bitcoin miners private section here is to focus on growing the portfolio, especially in the trading one where we do the ratio trades. And as I've shown you, with the ratio trade opportunities, there's a lot more to come yet between now and the end of the bull market. So that's where we are. And if that sounds interesting to you and you want to join us and you just want to have a look at exactly what we do over the next few months, before you even want to take part in ratio trades and just want to get your head around the Bitcoin miners, then you can join us by clicking the join button. So you can join us at the private Bitcoin miners member section by clicking the join button here below any of my videos. And if you're using a handheld device, you'll find that the actual join button might be in the description box below. So when you click on that, so for the price of a coffee per week, you can join us and have access to all the potential of the ratio trades, as well as the passive portfolio, if you just want to leave your money in with the Bitcoin miners and ride it up in the bull market. And what we do with the Bitcoin miners, we have two videos per week, where we focus on the portfolio as well as the ratio trades on the Wednesday and the Friday. And to keep everybody focused, we have a market update at the end of the trading day, Monday to Friday. And finally, we're going to have a look at our favorite part of this video, and that is this. We're going to have a Bexit countdown. And we're going to have a look at a couple of the indicators which tells us quite clearly that we have not bottomed out and that we still have one more leg to go to the end of the bull market. But before I show you those, I want to just make sure that everybody has got their focus on the right area. Just like you could be fishing in the wrong part of the lake for the type of fish that you're fishing, most people in this space with Bitcoin tend to be focused on the wrong things. And I just want to mention this because it's incredibly important if you really want to be successful. And I've been showing you over the last many, many months, showing you many targets from where we are currently here, at around about the 60 to 70,000. This is where we are now, but this is where we want to get to. And what I really think is very important, and I can only share this with you in terms of what my thoughts are, and it's up to you how you process that information. And that is that many people ask me many, many times, what is the likely potential price at the end of the bull market? And this is where these boxes come in, that if we get to the end of 2024, this could be the likely price. And I've gone through many of those prices. And if we have a right translated cycle, we could go right up to the end of the 2025 here. So these are our potential end of the bull market reversal points coming up. And I've given you quite a number of targets here on purpose so that nobody gets to the point where they actually have a fixation on one point. So using many different techniques of indicators, etc., and the Fibonacci retracements, in the last many months, I've given you price targets of about 104,000, 200,000, 350,000, and 500,000. Because the expectation is that we're probably going to top out anywhere between those points, between 100 to 500,000. And I've done that deliberately, so nobody can come back and say that, oh, you said 500,000 or 300,000. Because I can tell you that many people ask me what price level do I have in mind and I want to reveal that to you that I actually have not one price at all. I have no prices in my mind at this point. I'm aware of the possibilities here but I have not one price in mind because the focus on a price would probably be the biggest mistake anybody can do. But instead, what the smart investors always focus on is the actual trigger to get out of the market. And this is where the exit indicators come. So if the exit indicators are saying 
that the price has topped out at 100,000, you have to get out at this point, irrespective of whether you want 500,000 or anything in between. Those are irrelevant figures. They mean absolutely nothing. But what is of real value is the exit indicators, because they're telling us that the market has topped out and we need to get out. And that could be at 100, 200, 300, 400, wherever that's going to be. And this is why I show you the exit indicators because this is where we have to shift our focus, not on a figure here or here, but on the exit indicators. That is where what we call fishing in the right place for the right fish. And of course, the main indicator that we have is the pie cycle, whereby the green line is expected to cross over the red line somewhere along the line. So wherever this point is going to be, whether it's at 100, 200, 300, 400, wherever this is going to be, that is where the top is, not where the targets are of 100, 200, 300, and 400. So we have to shift our focus to the exit indicators. And you can see quite clearly that the green line is nowhere near the red line. So we still have another big leg of the bull market still to run. But the two exit indicators I want to show you today, which confirm the fact that these two lines are well apart at the moment, is the MVRVZ score. And what this is really telling us is that you can see quite clearly there's the red zone here where the market tends to top out and the green zone where you end up buying, these are the bottoms of the bear markets. And so what you've got is the MVRVZ score that whenever we top out, we hit this downward trending line that we've had since the beginning of Bitcoin back here in 2010. So we can see that at every top it has protruded over this yellow line here at this point and this point. And this is the most important thing here. We're currently absolutely nowhere near there. So we know based on these indicators that there's still quite a bit to go yet. And the second one, which I show you regularly is the Maya multiple. And what we have is this yellow line here, the Maya multiple, which is weaving its way all the way here and currently we are at a point, at that point there, just like we were over here. And this was the start of the parabolic phase. So this is what we expect, that we are now really at the beginning of the parabolic phase, which should take us above the 2.4. So this is where it's going to top out. I don't think you can see that. Let me just move this. Okay, so I'll move this to the left here so you can see quite clearly. 2.4 is the level we need to get to. This is where the markets top out. And you can see the big gap between the two of where we are and where we need to get to. So for those people who think we've topped out, the charts are telling us a different story. And it begs the question, what happens if the exit indicators don't play out in this cycle like they have done over the last previous three cycles? And that is a valid question because unfortunately, we have to be always realistic and be aware of the realities because if the Bitcoin price does top out without the exit indicators, signaling that we've topped out, then we are really, to be very honest with you, in a bit of trouble because the exit indicators are all we've got. Unless somebody else knows anything when the Bitcoin price is going to top out, we only have these exit indicators as an indication or a signal, the trigger, when the Bitcoin price has topped out. In the absence of that, it's going to be really guesswork and we may have to rely on candlestick patterns. So until the exit indicators don't work, since they've already worked in the previous three cycles, then that's all we've got. And until they stop working, we have to really rely on them. And if you can read up here, to give some explanation of the Maya multiple, it says here, when we have seen it above the top 2.4 level, that generally has been a good area to start selling. When you have seen it below, when we have seen it at or below the bottom 0.8 level, that has generally been a good area to buy. And this is exactly where it's at at the moment, around the 0.8 level. And what we're now seeing is that the Maya multiple has reset to the same level we had last had in October 2023. But despite the reset in the Maya multiple, the price is now twice as high as it was in October 2023. And it goes on to say price can still go down or up from this level. And that is not the point of the graphic. What is the point of the graphic is that it's a perfect visualization for sentiment being reset to bearish despite price remaining very high. And that is very bullish for Bitcoin in the medium to long term in the author's opinion. So there you have it. We should be really on the cusp of the next leg of the bull market. And it's anybody's guess at what price is going to top out. But what is of paramount importance is we look at the Bexit indicators to give us some sort of a guideline when to get off. 
and our focus should be on the Bexit indicators and not on any level that we've had a look at in terms of the targets. The target can be 100 to 400 to 800 to a million. It really doesn't matter. That figure is totally irrelevant. Okay, we're going to leave it there. I hope you found value in the video. If you did, then please do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you've got any comments, leave them in the comment section below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.